Welcome to the Huge Pop Sports Podcast here on the Huge Pop YouTube channel, where we talk all things in the wide world of sports like baseball, basketball, football, hockey, and much, much more. So please welcome our hosts to the Huge Pop Sports Podcast, the MA Double T, and the Huge Pop himself, Matt and Scott Rogers. Back with another special edition of the Huge Pop Sports Podcast. It is draft day. It is my one of my favorite times of year. It is the NFL draft. We get to see what the new the new era brings for the new for this new season. What we get to look forward to for our favorite teams. What are they going to do to help improve and get to that next level? And, or in the case of the Kansas City Chiefs, what are they going to do to stay at that championship level? Um, hopefully not draft a, a kid who's going to play one year and hit a dude with a car. Um, but we're going to kind of do a mock draft as we go. We're going to kind of break down what, at what position, at uh, like what we think at the, at uh at the number one spot should go to like what, what the bears should get and what they should go after and what they will go after and that kind of stuff. But again, it's me. It's me. It's that MA double T riding with me as always my bro ski Scott. Uh, what's up, dude? Talk about NFL football, NFL draft. Um, Big, I mean, cool news. If if you follow me on Facebook, you you'll you'll probably get uh really really sick of me posting here in the next few days. Um, I'm I'm very lucky to be uh. What's going on, Justin? Thanks for joining. Um. So, here it is. I'm very blessed and lucky to be able to uh, be part of the uh, Detroit Lions legend camp that rolls through Claire every year. Um, this year we have uh, a new person coming in. The one, the last quarterback to win a playoff game before, before uh, uh, Jared Goff did it this season, Eric Kramer is going to be at the camp this year. Nice. Nice. So I'm kind of, I'm really excited for that. Um, I'm I'm still in talks with um with a couple of people that are in, that are higher up inside of that camp um to potentially get uh Mr. Jeff Chadwick, former wide receiver for the Detroit Lions on the show. I think he would have a lot of great cool stories to tell and just talk about his organization that we're running through um, for to, to provide this, provide the camp for the kids. Um, it's, it's just a really cool camp to be part of. And I'm so, again, I'm so blessed to be part of it. Um, thanks, thanks, Justin, man. Thanks. Appreciate that. So, I mean, I guess we can just kick it straight off with, uh, um, the number one overall pick goes to the Chicago Dubbers. Uh They clearly are going to take a quarterback, ladies and gentlemen. They clearly are going to take a quarterback, trading Justin Fields away in the offseason. Now, I, I'll let you. I'll, I'll let you go first, but I want to. I want to make a statement. Yeah. I would not want to be in the in the position that Chicago has because everyone wants this person that we're going to say is going to go number one because of every mock draft that I've read through, everyone has Caleb Williams one. I wouldn't, but when we get, when I'll let you uh, talk about it and then I'll share my opinion on the guy. Um, First of all, Justin Fields was, I think, a fantastic quarterback that wasn't ready for the prof- for, for pros. I'll just say that. Great, great college quarterback. Good, good decision to, to trade him away. Caleb, but 
everybody wants to talk about Caleb Williams, and I he's a great quarterback, but I could go down the line and I could talk about different quarterbacks that have impressed the hell out of me in the draft in the, in the combines. You know, I could talk about JJ McCarthy, no favoritism. Uh, you got the kid from LSU. I do not understand why everything is so high up on the guy that didn't even take his team to the playoffs. Playoffs. That's, that's the first thing I got to say. I would have went with the guy from Washington first. But everybody's saying Caleb Williams, and I'm not sure if I'd do that. I would have, I really am not. Matt's looking like I'm a, looking at me like I'm a dumbass, but I surely would not do that. I think I'd pick, I hate to, see, I would hate to see JJ in Chicago. But I think he'd be a good pick too to be in Chicago. If I was Chicago Bears, I would pick, in my opinion, the best quarterback in the draft would J.J. McCarthy. That's who I'd pick. Um, well, okay. I don't know if that's what you want me to say, Matt. I don't. I well, don't no, say. I mean, that's your opinion. And if if it came down to me picking number one for Chicago, it would not be Caleb Williams. It would not be J.J. McCarthy. I think the guy that would benefit the most from going to the going to Chicago, and again, I'm going to probably catch a lot of hell for the if if when this gets released, is I think it would to me it's a coin flip between uh uh do 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 uh Jaden Daniels and Bo Nix. Both of those guys, in my opinion, are the only two quarterbacks that are ready on day one to step up under center. Because I, the the list of five quarterbacks that are going to go in the first six, I think there's six quarterbacks that are projected to go in the first round. The list of those six, I can find faults on all of them. There's good for all of them, but there's also a lot of faults. Like JJ McCarthy, maybe he did. We didn't really get to see what his arm was about at Michigan because we ran the ball. Um, so we don't know if he has that. That yeah, uh, did, did you see his last uh, throw day at throw day the other day? He had throw day, and man, he was lighting it up. Yeah, but that's without pads and like. I I get that, and I get that. Um, I just think, I think he would benefit more for what's going to happen later in the draft. Yeah. I mean, so my question to you, Matt, would be, okay, so if Caleb Williams is the number one guy. Everybody's talking about Caleb Williams and a kid from Washington. I'm not really, so make me, maybe you can, um, bring up the speed. How many drafts does Chicago have in that first round? Uh, I think they got what? three in the first round so if there's that many quarterbacks and that kid from washington is the guy that you think that they that fit better or the kid from lsu well no bo nix is from oregon i'm sorry bo nix oregon and um the guy from lsu would you think that they grab marvin harrison jr first then pick that quarterback later on in the, in the first round because one of those guys are going to be around As i don't a, think Man, I don't know. I don't think Marvin Harrison Jr. is worth the number one pick. I'm just saying he's he's the best wide receiver in the draft. Yeah, I mean, I I just I wouldn't take him. I wouldn't take Marvin Harrison Jr. first. Okay. I would I would get my franchise quarterback okay. right out of the bat. Um, and it wouldn't. And if it was me picking. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be Caleb Williams, but it will be Caleb Williams tonight when yeah. when the when the clock strikes zero, it will be Caleb Williams. It's just how this how this shocked. whole thing's gonna I will be shocked. I, I will be shocked. If, if it's not, JJ if it's JJ, I will be just like I'll be I'll be shocked. 
And I mean, I don't get me wrong. There is other quarterbacks and JJ. And the thing, the thing, of, the fear I have with quarterbacks in the NFL coming right out of college, you can be a, a stud of a running back and a badass receiver, and immediately you'll make an impact. A lot of these first round quarterbacks, Justin Fields, end up not being a professional NFL quarterback or as good as they were in college. And that's my struggle. I don't want Caleb Williams to get drafted number one and fall flat on his face. I mean, McCarthy, you're, you said it. McCarthy's not even ready. I don't think McCarthy's ready. He needs to go to a team that can sit behind the, the starter. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think the only place he belongs that he would start, that he would be able to start right now would be for the Chargers. Yes. And, they, and they're and they sitting at number five. But yeah. we'll get to that here in a few minutes. Well, yeah, um, I guess I guess Caleb Williams would probably be the the number one. I mean, but I don't I don't like it. I don't like a quarterback being picked number one. I I don't like the fact that I mean I think Justin Fields is a lot a lot nicer of a quarterback than Caleb. Correct. So you're giving up something to get something worse. And I hope the Steelers just absolutely crush it this year. Absolutely. I mean, I might be a Steelers fan, even though I don't like Ohio State, but I but they got a great he's a great Justin Fields is a great quarterback. Yeah. I'm I was shocked that Chicago let go. I'm like, okay. So number two, uh the Washington uh commanders uh coming in at two. All like again, it's gonna sound like I'm reading down the uh the uh mock drafts because they we're all kind of the same in the same collective boat. I think anyone who's watched football in the last like year and a half, they they see they see the different things that are going on. Um, so yeah, it's my mock draft is pretty much the same as every other mock draft out there. Um, Jaden Daniels, uh, Heisman winner. I would take him over. I personally, if I'm picking between Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, I'm taking Jaden Daniels. Um, but Jane Daniels will probably go number two. Yeah. Um, but if I was, if I was, uh, Washington, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily take, uh, Jane Daniels. I would probably take Drake May. Um, I think he's a little bit more sturdy of a quarterback. Um, but Drake, Drake May will probably fall the, the next pick at, at number three. Yeah. I agree with that. I would say they do need a quarterback at Washington. And I would pick the kid from LSU for a second. I would have to do that. And it's just the way that it, it's going to be. And Jane Daniels will go number two to, L, or to uh, Washington. Absolutely. Yeah. That's for sure. uh, New England's another team. The Patriots, they need a quarterback. They need a quarterback very desperately. Uh, haven't had a good quarterback since Tom Brady came through. Um, they're in a complete rebuild mode right now, and it's going to be it's going to be Drake May at number three, I think, unless they get unless they get uh, Froggy and and decide that they want to take a take a, um because they have a history of taking Michigan uh, yeah. players, so I mean they might reach reach out and uh, go with uh, JJ McCarthy at number three. I'm not gonna lie. I'd rather a team from a different division take them than a team from uh, the, the Lions division. I've heard rumors that he might go to Minnesota, but of course, again, New England's they need a quarterback, and if we follow suit with what's projected, it'd be Drake May because that kid can go too. I mean, North Drake May North, is really good. I mean, I remember having conversations with you on during our Friday um, sports talk that. North Carolina, for some reason, became a was a basketball team school. They made some noise in the football in the football world too, in college football. So, so yeah, um, I mean, Drake May's actually he's he's super. Let's see, um, at number four, we have the Arizona Cardinals sitting at four. Um, You know, at, at four, Arizona Cardinals, they don't need a quarterback. They, um, 
trying to get my my phone to update. Um, yeah, they don't need a. They don't need a uh, quarterback because um, they got Kyler Murray. They need a wide receiver, and I think that's when Marvin Harrison comes off the board. I think Marvin Harrison will be the first non-quarterback taken in the in the draft, and because uh, Kyler doesn't have anyone to throw to. Oh, I agree. I'd have to agree with that. Um, again. If it, it for those for, for those of you watching, I'm legit. Uh, I'm essentially agreeing with because I've done my research. I've been like talking with other other people all week long. I work for a college, uh, at in their football building, and we've kind of talked off and on about like like the, some of these players, and you know they're agreeing with a lot of these uh, a lot of the uh, mock drafts that you know that it makes sense where these people will end up. Um, at number five, this is where it gets a little dicey. The Chargers take at five or pick at five. I've heard so many different scenarios. Uh, like the one of the um, a lot of the people are saying that the Chargers hold hold at number five. They don't take. Um. They don't take uh, JJ at five because they have Justin Herbert, and they take um, Malik Neighbors from LSU, a wide receiver, um, to help Justin Herbert out. Um, is that something that could potentially happen? Yeah. Um, I also feel like there could also be a trade with. Uh, with uh, Minnesota and San Diego, or not San Diego, but of the Chargers, and picture it if you will. There's a trade, and we have the Chargers sending Justin Herbert and a oh gosh, when they pick, I think they have like the 26th pick as well in the draft. Um, um, what do I got? Because I thought they had something later on in the draft, too. Chargers. Um, I can't remember. So the Chargers have I only see one in the first in the first round. Well, okay, so I think what they could potentially do is the Chargers could send Justin Herbert and their second their second and third round draft picks to Minnesota for the number eleven pick. That's what I can see happening. Like, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I can see that happening. So they could end up taking um, neighbors at, uh, at, at five. It gives them a wide receiver. Right. And then trade away their second, third round picks to, to Minnesota for their 11th pick. Because Justin Herbert for their 11th pick in and of itself would be worth it. Well, who are they picking the 11th pick then? Number yeah. two from Michigan. Okay. Yeah. He picked JJ McCarthy. And that would honestly be the steal of the draft. If that happened, that would be highway robbery for in favor of. The Chargers. Yeah. Their coach would love that, wouldn't they? Oh, it'd be amazing. But 
Malik Neighbors, or it gets, or the or the Vikings do trade up. Maybe the Vikings do trade up and uh, land in that five spot, and then they take JJ McCarthy. Either one's going to happen. Yeah. More, more, probably leaning more towards seeing <laughs> JJ McCarthy twice a week or twice a year for us Lions fans. Probably. I mean, if, if you're talking what the uh, prediction is, uh, you're talking about the Chargers, right? Yeah. They're saying their need is Joe Alt from an offensive tackle from Notre Dame. And that wouldn't be a bad pick either because he's the best O-line, O-lineman in the draft. Yeah. So that's one of those things where, you know, when you get back down to the fifth round, fifth, fifth pick, they start playing position-wise. What do we really need? Yep. Do they need a Her, – Herbert's good. But – yeah, what's more important, I guess. Um, Bleacher Report, this is one that I'm looking at. Bleacher Report says neighbors at five for the Chargers and wide receiver because they don't have any. They don't. Right. Mike Williams left, and so did Keenan Allen. Sure, so, sure. Um, next just, up, we have the New York Giants again, another team that has zero wide receivers to throw to, and Daniel Jones, the the biggest. The biggest waste of cap, uh, cap space that the Giants have ever had. Um, I'm going a wider. I'm going wide receiver with this one too. Okay. Um, wide receiver because there are no running backs out there. Right. Because Blake Corum is not NFL ready for. He's not. He doesn't have the size. He's just too small, um, unfortunately. Um, but. I'm going to say probably uh, the Giants will probably take uh, Roma Dunze yeah. from Washington. If He'd Malik the... Neighbors is gone, I, be, I would say that, yes. If if Malik's still around. So if if the if the Vikings do trade up to that number f- uh, four, five, it's going to be Malik Neighbors falling to number six at the at, for the Giants. But if Malik does get taken by the Chargers, you will probably see Roma Dunze at uh, six. Yeah. Uh, number seven, it's, again, all depending on the Chargers at this point um, because the Titans do need an offensive line as well. They do need an offensive lineman, and you got to start at the OT and Joe Alt. Yeah. Yeah, so their picks are going to depend on here, like you said, what the Chargers do. For the next couple, it's going to be like that. Yeah. It's what the Chargers do at at, at five that really – it's just going to be a trickle-down effect from there. Um, number eight, uh, Atlanta Falcons. They have their quarterback and Kirk Cousins, so they don't need anything there. They have a really good running back, so they really don't need anything offensively because Kyle Pitts – plays tight end and kind of a uh, wide receiver uh, type type player. Um, they need help on defense, um, specifically in their secondary, because they, they're they just like us in Detroit. We need set help on the secondary. Right. Um, now, the guy that Bleacher Report has him picking is Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. Now, I've, I've saw him play this year. Kid's a lockdown. He's a lockdown defender because CMU plays Toledo. Right. Really super fast, super athletic. Uh, and he, they're saying that he is the best defensive player in the draft this year. But so, Matt, that, that, so I got a question for you. I see two. I see two names that they're saying on um because on uh. Looks like I have. Now, you have a guy, a kid from Alabama, Dallas Turnity, on the edge, compared to Quinnen Mitchell, cornerback for Toledo. Do you see a major difference in the ability in players at a SEC school compared to a MAC school? Or at that level, are they all that good? I think it's all they're all that good. I don't okay. I don't think there's because you have to think to play D one football, you have to be the the top one percent of the uh, top two percent of the top 
five percent. You know what I mean? You, to yeah. play at an elite level, um, and some because sometimes the kid Murphy is the best defensive player in the draft. We haven't gotten to him yet. Don't forget uh, to hit the follow button on the t- on, on uh, Twitch, please. He's Don't actually. He's actually coming up next. I think he's going to be the number nine pick. Um, he's going to end up with Chicago Bear, uh, Murphy. But uh, I think uh, for Quinion Mitchell, it's a need for and and that's the thing. Like they need defense. And if it, if I'm Atlanta, I'm I am looking at Murphy because I, they need another edge rusher. They need someone like that. But I think in this the to overlook a guy like Quinion Mitchell in the in the back half of your defensive secondary, it'd be kind of ridiculous on that one. Um next up we have Chicago Bears. Uh, picking at uh nine again. It all depends on where people pick. Who? Um, the Chicago Bears might pick a guy like Byron Murphy right. from Texas. Wouldn't doubt it. He's a good defensive lineman. Very, very solid kid. Um, you know, um, but I also wouldn't wouldn't mind seeing them uh, get some more help in their secondary as well. But probably gonna end up taking Byron Murphy at, at nine. Okay. Um number ten, the New York Jets. This is a slam dunk either way you wanna go with it. In my opinion. They take Brock Bauer from Georgia. The big yeah. cat that kid's a, that kid's a gamer. The only tight end in the draft worth drafting. Right. Absolutely. He's a beast. I mean, and he probably won't play tight end. They're they're already they're already saying he's the next uh, Travis Kelsey. I was how did he say how? There's how I mean that kid is money. I don't think he's overrated at all. I think no, he is no. underrated. I think he's going to be the next. They're already comparing him to Travis Kelsey. Like he's going to be the next Travis Kelsey. And what better quarterback to have? You must not watch the Lions because or or the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's go. Okay, so let me let me point out something. I learned that I'm not I'm not saying that I'm smart at all, but I watched the teams that made it far in the playoffs, and guess who they had? They had, a, bad, they had a badass tight end all the time. Okay, so Hawkinson was on the Lions. We traded him. Sam Laporta, Lion. <laughs> You know, like they're the so tight ends in the first round. Kyle Pitts, he's a tight end. So yeah, tight ends in the first round. I don't know what. I'm pretty sure we had two first rounders that that year, and we picked Laporta with our second. I think what Matt's saying is that a tight end is it, a, it, is is an important piece of the piece of the game. It doesn't. It doesn't matter where they're drafted, in my opinion, because to take a risk on a to take a shot with a guy like Laporta or a guy like Hawkinson, it's they get the job done. As as rookies, they got the job done. So Sam Laporta was up for rookie of the year. All right. Hey, you know what, boxer or boxes? Appreciate you coming in here. Hey, that's cool. That's cool. Thanks for the info. Now, I appreciate you coming in here. That's your opinion, and you're entitled to your opinion. But just know that Laporta, even though he was not a first rounder, he was all rookie, and he was 
Oh, he was on the Pro Bowl. He was all he he made the Pro Bowl team, and so I appreciate you coming in here, though. Um, next up, number eleven, the Minnesota Vikings will pick at eleven unless they trade up. Uh and if they do, if they don't trade up to number five to take uh, to JJ to get JJ McCarthy. Um, if they don't, they'll take them here because no one from five till to 11 will take them. There's no need for a quarterback anywhere between five and 11. So that's just my opinion. I, I just think that either they trade up to that number five, take them then, or wait for them to fall to 11. But either way, Minnesota's going to get themselves a quarterback in the with the in the first round. Again, I don't want to see JJ McCarthy in a in the same conference as we are. I think that kid's money. He's he's only going to get better. So, um, so twelve is the Denver Broncos uh, projecting. They're projecting uh, Dallas. Uh, Ed rusher Dallas Turner from Bama, the big fella. He uh, he he definitely showed showed up in that semifinal game. Um, he's he's probably the best. He's obviously the best edge rusher in the draft, and uh, he just an, he is a gamer. But you know that's kind of a kind of a staple in the Bama defense, you know what I mean? Like they always have some sort of badass on the outside that's able to get it, like wreak havoc on the inside. So uh, Denver does need, they need a quarterback too, but I think they need more defense than they do offense at this point. So I'm going to agree with uh, with this one and uh, say Dallas Turner probably. Probably, at 12. yeah. Yep. And they do have – Another edge is that kid from UCLA Latou. He's good He's at, at the edge position as well. But I think you're right, Dallas Turner. You have to do that. Um, the the Vegas Raiders are up next. Um, there's a couple picks that they could do, that they could go with here. Um, they could end up taking the uh, Bo Nix. They could end up taking Michael Penix Jr. Um. But I think before they do anything like that, they need to address the hole up front. They need to address that the offensive line that has shaky at best. Um, I'm going to say they're probably going to take uh, offensive tackle uh, J.C. Latham from Bama. That's my that that's my pick on that one. I mean, they there, there's that um, cornerback Taron Arnold from Alabama. They need they do need a cornerback as well. I think. But um, but I think you're right. I, you know, where does it start? Where does this? Where does a good offense start? It starts with the line. Let's let's build that up. I mean, J.C. Latham is the second best guy be, uh, behind Alt. Yeah, sure. On the on the offensive line, um, but so if you can't have Alt, you might as well go with J.C. Make sure that helps uh, whoever's going to be under center for uh, for the Raiders this year. Number 14 with the New Orleans Saints. Um, this one was a little bit of a, a, a it was tough for me to figure or figure out who I thought they were going to take. Um, this, there's all, all the ones that I, all the drafts, mock drafts that I've read pretty much said that they were going to take uh, Troy, uh, that Troy kid. I can't pronounce his last name. The kid, the big fella from uh, Washington. That uh, linebacker, okay. I think. No, uh, I'm sorry. Offensive line. Uh, Fout Nadu. Fout Nadu, yeah. Um, like it, it. That's again. It will have a few off. This draft itself is heavy with offensive players. It's heavy with the O line, the run, the quarterbacks and receivers. It's heavy with those. So, Fountainado at fourteen, I think is is pretty much a, 
a lock, I think, because they uh, the Saints are rolling with Jimmy G. Um, what about that kid from Penn State, that Alu Fasho, Fashano? Fashano? Is that, that, that's the guy you're talking about? Uh, no, this uh, he's from Washington, University okay. of Washington. Uh, next up, we have the Colts. Uh, they they're gonna need some wide. They're gonna they're in need of a because uh, they got g- decent defense. They have a good offensive line. The, they really need another guy to help out uh, Jonathan Taylor. Um, they need a wide receiver. They need another guy like a Marvin Marvin Harrison but from back in the day. They need someone like that. Uh, and what better guy to do that is Brian Thomas from uh, LSU. That's true. Yeah. Uh, he's got speed on the outside. He isn't is isn't afraid to get physical. Right. And I I think he's one of those guys that can make a difference. Yeah. Sixteen. The Seattle Seahawks. This is where I personally would like to see Michael Penix Jr. go. I think because his offensive coordinator from from Washington is now the Seattle uh, Seahawks uh, offensive coordinator. He also has DK Metcalf. He has um, I'm drawing a name, drawing a blank on his name. The uh, the other uh, TJ Lockett. Um, and Rashad Penny, they have a lot of really good players uh, on the offensive side of the ball to help uh, Penix out. I think that would be a perfect fit for him. It's in his backyard. Penix has been playing in uh, Washington for the last couple of years, and the University of Washington is in Seattle. So that's almost, and to me, it's a slam dunk. Who's their quarterback now? Seattle Seahawks. Um, I don't know. You okay? So let's we're talking about quarterbacks. I need a quarterback. Would Penix be ready to go day one? Is he the NFL only concern ready? I have? The only concern I have with Penix is his uh, his durability because his injury. He he showed that he has had injuries. I mean, our defense at the in the Natty, right? We played them. Yeah, yeah. We knocked them out. We knocked them out. I mean, he was. Mid at best, we took care of him. I don't know, man. I mean, that's but uh, this one has them taking Jared Burst from Florida State, the edge rusher. Now that's the guy. If if he could fall another thirteen picks to twenty nine, I would love that because okay. I mean I think. Putting him on the opposite side of Aiden Hutchinson would just be an absolute nightmare for uh, for all NFL teams that play the Lions, but uh, probably not going to happen. Uh, at 17, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars. They need a little bit of everything. They're kind of they're kind of one of those teams like oh Cody's team, the Buffalo Bills. They need a little bit of help in at every at, at every position because they just can't don't have that extra you know they don't have the young talent that they can just slide in like say a Detroit or or San Francisco has um so they're probably going to go with uh Terry and Arnold defensive back from uh Alabama they need a re- they need a wide receiver so that so their quarterback can throw the ball to somebody that court their quarterback's not bad no but you know like I think you can get a. I think you can get a a good wide receiver in the second round. You think so? Um, Ro, uh, Romeo Wilson from Michigan. He'll be available in the second round because he's not a first rounder, and I think he'd be a prototype good possession receiver. What about Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU? That receiver. Uh, he will probably fall into the second round. Yeah. Okay. Um, at 18, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, they need more. They need. They need an offensive line. Yeah. Because they need to make sure Joe Burrow stays upright. Yep. 
And so I'm going to go, I'm probably going to take that, uh, that offensive tackle from uh, that Fuga, or Fu- Fuga right. from Oregon State. I think he's, he's probably the best uh, available offensive lineman. The offensive lineman from Georgia, Armarius Mims, he's good. Yeah, I think he falls a little bit later. I think he, I think he'll so? fall. Yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, Talasia F- uh, Fuga from uh, Oregon State, just it seems like a better fit in Cincinnati. Um. Next up, we have the nineteen. Then we had nineteen. We have the the Rams. Uh, picking at nineteen, they need offensive line help as well to keep Matt Stafford upright. I think they go with that offensive tackle from Penn State. Um, Bashuno. Yeah, that, that's a good possibility. Yeah. Um, uh, because they run the ball a lot. They huh. they, they run the ball a lot, and so does Penn State. So it's just, it's again, it's one of those things. Does he fit here? What pu- what piece of the puzzle is good for here? Correct. Yes. Uh, number 20, you've got the Pittsburgh Steelers, another team. This is the part of the, this is the part of the draft where you're going to see a lot of old linemen going, I think. And this one uh, might be that guy from Georgia. Yeah. Mims. Mims. Mims um, or that, or Barton from Duke. Right. Um, but it's, it's a coin flip at that point. Right. They're saying that if, and one of the sites are saying that Mims will go to Pittsburgh or to, the Fuga guy that you're talking about. He, if he's available, that might be a better pick. So, but the guy from Duke's a solid pick too. Um, this one I'm, I've been kind of reading, uh, last couple of days, uh, number 21, the Dolphins taking Mims. And that wouldn't be a bad pick for them either. If if he could if 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 he falls to twenty one, that would be an absolute steal for the Dolphins. Um, I th- he he's your prototype lineman. He's the Georgia Bulldog. Yep. Twenty two rolls around. We have the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, Projected here on this uh, on on this page, it says Tyler Guyton, Oklahoma offensive tackle. Yep. And another really good offensive tackle. Oklahoma always produces really good O linemen. Right. Um. And Philadelphia has that need. They need to. They need an offensive lineman. Yep. Yes, they do. Uh, twenty three. The Vikings. Um. This is where this is where it could be interesting. The Vikings have two picks in that first round. Uh, they could potentially trade both of those, and this is again they could end up trading the eleven pick and this twenty third pick for that number five to get JJ McCarthy if they really want to make that move. Um, and if they do, this could be the uh, Chargers picking here as well. And this is. Kind of one of those things where you could pick it. You could end up picking the same guy that Minnesota might pick here is that edge rusher, Latuo Latu from UCLA. Right. He's that's in his backyard, UCLA. He's in. He'd be a perfect fit for for a team like the Chargers. Twenty four. We got the Dallas Cowboys picking at twenty four. That's the JB's team. Um, they need help at every offensive position, and I love it. Sorry, JB, if you're still watching. Uh, but I love the fact that your team is absolutely drowning this in this offseason. Troy Pollard out of here. They're even talking about bringing Ezekiel Elliott back. That shit's funny. Um, but wide receiver Xavier Worthy could be the could be the guy. He's a home. He's a guy from Texas, um, and he at the time would be the best wide receiver available. Yeah. Number twenty-five, we got the Green Bay Packers. Coop uh, taking uh, probably the most athletic guy in the in the draft. Because I was I've been watching highlights of this kid playing high school basketball. 
His name's Cooper Dijon. If you get a chance, look him up. Cooper Dijon, it's, okay. Cooper Dijon high school basketball. His senior year, he was jumping from inside the foul line and just stuffing it home. Nice. He is Caucasian. Wow. The kid is crazy athletic. What about this kid, Kool-Aid McKinstry? They got, well, him on their, they got him on the radar, too. From um, That's the guy that I want the Lions to take. Okay. That's the kid. If he if he can fall to 29 where we're picking, I really hope we can get Kool-Aid McKinstry. All right, we'll go there. But Green Bay Packers taking Cooper DeJean, one of the freak athletes in the draft, I think it would be tremendous. Um, number 26, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, interior lineman, again, is a concern because they have so many holes. So Their, their offensive line is like Swiss cheese. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say Jackson Power Johnson from Oregon, offensive of tackle or offensive of guard. I'm sorry. Um, I think, and he, I think he's, he, he's a setter as well. So I think that's the, that's kind of a slam dunk for me on that one. I mean, as a guy in Florida, Washington, Tampa, they need some offensive rushers or defensive rushers as well. I mean, there's going to be a couple of guys, Chop Johnson. Jap Robinson or Jared Verse as edges. And that kid from Florida State, Jared Verse, he's a good pick too. If they get there, get him an edge guy. Well, Jared Verse won't, or he won't be there at. No, he uh, won't be there at twenty six. I, I can dream. <laughs> uh, twenty seven got the Arizona the Cardinals with another pick. Uh, and they need help on the on, on the defensive side. I think they take Chop. I think they take Chop from uh, Penn State. Chop Robinson, he's he played very well against Michigan. Yeah. Twenty eight. We got the Buffalo Bills. Um, Cody, if you're listening, this is going out to oh, you. Bills. I think you guys probably take a wide receiver in this pick. You guys just lost. <laughs> you guys take a. You guys lost. Uh, Stephon Diggs. In the offseason, you guys need a speedy guy on the outside. I think the guy for you is a Don A. Mitchell from yep. Texas. Brilliant. Um, he is a deep threat. He is the guy. He is he is one of those game changer kind of guys. Uh number not number twenty nine goes to Detroit. I already a few minutes ago said who I thought they would take. This specific uh, mock draft I'm looking at right here agrees with me. Cornerback Kool-Aid McKinstry, Alabama. Um, and I think as this one right here, Kool-Aid is the fit. Detroit doesn't need anything offensively. Right. We just don't. Our right. offense is not broken. We do right. not need a deep threat. We no. don't need we don't need anything like that. No. We need a guy on that defensive secondary that's gonna get the job done, gonna gonna lock kids down, gonna, you know, play play his ass off in the secondary. So yes, Kool-Aid McKinstry is the guy. And if he's not there for whatever reason. I would take a long, hard look at Mike Sandstrill from Michigan. That man is an absolute beast. Yes, 100%. At number 30, we're take, we're looking at the um, Baltimore Ravens. So, Hill Kevin, if you're out there listening, this is who I think you guys are going to go after. It's, uh, you guys need help on that offensive line. You guys need help to keep Lamar Jackson upright. Uh, you have Derrick Henry in the backfield now. That's uh, going to help you, right? So we got – you need some help on that O-line to block. So I'm going to say you're going to go Patrick Paul out of Houston. I think that would be the safe pick for you guys because uh, there's really no one else that you could really lock down in this position or at this point in the draft that, you know – right. 
they at this side I'm looking at they have Jordan Mo Jordan Morgan from Arizona as an offensive tackle. That might be an option too if your pick's not there. Um next up we got the San Francisco 49ers. Um potentially losing David Ayuk um is a is a concern. Um I'm going to say they're probably going to take a wide receiver to help out Debo Samuel if that happens. Um, they're probably going to take, uh, I'm going to say Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. Um, very fast on the outside. Uh, he just, but he can also be that slot receiver when, when needed. Um, so yeah, David Leggett, or I'm not, not David, Xavier Leggett from South Carolina goes to San Francisco at uh, 31. Um, at 32, the last pick in the first round and the last pick we're going to talk about here, uh, and then we're going to end this, uh, close it, close it down again. Thank you all before we actually Kansas city, they need help a little bit everywhere. It's one of those things that they're trying to mold for the future. Defensive lineman, interior defensive lineman help, not an edge rusher, probably a defensive tackle. Um, and, uh, I'm going to say maybe a guy like J Jazir or Jahan Newton from Illinois at D town at, at defensive tackle. Um, I'm just going by what the site I'm reading. It says, uh, Lade McConaughey, McConaughey, McConkey from Georgia, the wide receiver. They're saying that, uh, Kansas city could use that as the first, as their 32 second pick. They, need a, they don't need another receiver, I guess. That's what, but. Well, I mean, they might they might take a wide receiver in the second round too because of they they could potentially be playing with without Raheem Rice next year. That's true too. Um, but thanks again, everyone. Uh, I didn't really advertise this uh, for our special edition of the draft day uh, special. Um, tomorrow will be. Uh, Coming at you with another episode of Huge Pop Sports Podcast, uh, where we dissect what happens tonight on the, in the draft, um, and then uh, we'll also be talking about the MLB, uh, the NBA playoffs are in full swing now, and the NHL playoffs. But we're going to be mainly talking about what happens tonight, what what dominoes may fall. After what happens, what we'll find out at number five, what the Chargers are going to do. Yep. I mean, do they go bold and say, you know what, screw it, we're going to pick JJ without even trading anybody? Just you know what, uh, it could happen. We don't know. We we could see something completely different and say Jim Harbaugh picks Blake Corum or Romeo or Romeo Will, uh, Wilson. And that's the thing, man. I mean. If I'm Jim Harbaugh, if I'm thinking what Jim Harbaugh's thinking, unfortunately, you know who he's. I know who he wants. He he said it. He's he's the he he says JJ's the best player, and he's he's better now than he said when he was coaching him at Michigan. He's at a different level. And does he pick his home? Does he pick his boy? Just because. Well, here's the thing too. That's it's really crazy to think about this. He compares them to Andrew Luck. Yeah. Andrew Luck was all pro until he broke his back. Yeah. Andrew Luck so. was a potential Super Bowl champion until he broke his back, too. I mean, that kid is... I don't know, man. We'll see. It all starts tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on ESPN. You can check, the, check that out tonight. And come back tomorrow. We'll have a discussion. Boxes, thank you for joining. Uh, Cody, thank you for stopping by. Um, just kind of give my shout outs right quick. Whoever else was here, I saw we had like five, five JB, or six people. JB. JB was here talking uh, for a few minutes. Uh, El Capitan, thanks for stopping by. Uh, again, drop us a like, drop us a follow on whatever you're watching this on. We love you guys. We love doing this. It's a lot of fun. It's like yeah. WrestleMania all over again for me because I love this stuff. And uh, thanks again, guys. We, I, 
I can't say that enough. Thank you, guys. Absolutely.